Hey everyone, this is Alan C98, and this video is my second in a series about MQTT. In the first video, I talked about MQTT and how it can be used to send data between devices. In this video, I'll show you how to set up and use MQTT on the Raspberry Pi. We'll look at using MQTT command line clients, then the Python MQTT libraries. Next, I'll show you how to use a couple of MQTT graphical client programs one on Windows and one on Android. Finally, we'll use the Raspberry Pi SenseHat emulator and we'll read some data from the sensors on that and publish that data to MQTT. So first let's talk about what you're going to need to use to get started on this. Okay, so the first thing you need is a Raspberry Pi. As you can see here on this page, the Raspberry Pi product page, there's a bunch of different models to choose from. The latest ones are this A+, and then the Model 3, or I'm sorry, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Plus. That's what I'm going to be using. Um, you can use any of them, any, even this Raspberry Pi 0W. Um, it has a wireless connection, and you can get it for as low as 5 bucks, depending on where you are. So you need a Raspberry Pi, and you need an operating system to run on it. Um, we use the Raspbian OS. Um, because that's the port of Linux that's made for the Raspberry Pi. There's a couple of other ports out there, but this is the most commonly used. And for our experiments, since we're using the desktop and a few of the other features, um, it's the easiest one to use for now. Let's see, what else do we need? So we also need either the SenseHat or the SenseHat simulator. The SenseHat is this add-on board for the Raspberry Pi that has a bunch of neat sensors. You know, like gyroscope, accelerometer, magnetometer, temperature, pressure, and humidity sensors. And it has this neat LED array that you can program and make it light up. And it's all controlled by the Python libraries that are, that are built into the Raspbian OS. So it's really easy to use. And let's see. So in addition to the, the SenseHat itself, Raspbian OS has a SenseHat emulator that you can use. So it's really cool. It's just a piece of software that simulates all these sensor values so you can actually use it without paying the 30 bucks and having it shipped. Sometimes it's hard to find depending on where you live. Um, so then, you know, it's helpful to have some knowledge of setting up the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm not really going to try to cover how to set up and install everything on the Raspberry Pi. But there's plenty of good um, material out there on the internet, including this page, this getting started with the Raspberry Pi page on the Raspberry Pi website itself. So it tells you everything you need to do, how you connect your keyboard, mouse, monitor, network, and the Raspbian OS is pretty easy to set up. So let's see here. Um, you also are going to need some sort of um, network to connect your Raspberry Pi to. You know, I'm assuming you're doing this at home and you have some sort of wireless router or wired router that you can plug into, but we're going to need to install some packages, including the MQTT server, and you can download some of the examples I have. So you really need to be plugged into the network. This is my home network setup. So I have the wireless router, and then I have my Raspberry Pi at this address. They're all local addresses on my network. And I have another board that's similar to a Raspberry Pi that we're not really using for this. And of course, I have the PC that I'm giving this demo on. Another thing that's needed is the ability to know a few of the Linux commands, to be able to type in some of these commands to install packages or just run Python scripts or run shell commands. So the more familiar you are with using Linux, the better off you'll be. Okay, well, let's get started on this. Um, as you see, the first thing we're going to do is install this MQTT broker. So let's switch over to the Raspberry Pi desktop here. I have a freshly installed version of the Raspbian OS. I'm using the latest release from November 13th, 2018. And this is a fresh install. I have it set up with the VNC network client so that I, actually the client on the PC and the server on the Pi, so that I can use my remote desktop and record it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna install an MQTT broker. So that's a simple command. And in fact, 
we're going to install all the software we need first and then start using it. So first let's install the MQTT broker we're using. We're actually going to use the Mosquito broker. And the Mosquito broker is an MQTT broker that's open source and it um, runs very well on a Raspberry Pi or any of these other small boards. It runs on Linux. I imagine it runs on other operating systems like Mac OS as well. So let's install that now. So you need to type in sudo apt install mosquito, and that's the name of the server. And it's going to collect some information, and then it says, oh, I need a few extra um, programs as well. So we hit yes, and we watch it download and install the packages. It's that easy just one line. Then the next time you actually boot up your Pi, the Mosquito server will automatically start and run so you're ready to send it MQTT messages. Now the one thing I didn't show you um, right before I did this was to make sure that you're connected to the network. So if you type in this command if config, you can see um, what your network configuration is. In my case, I'm not using the Ethernet, the, the actual wired networking, but I'm using the wireless. And you can see that this is my IP address, same as in my little diagram. And I can do something like ping google.com to make sure I'm connected to the internet. Let's see here, it's taking a minute. But there it is. So it had to do the name resolution, and now it's pinging the google.com website. Okay, so we've installed the Mosquito server. So let's install some of the command line programs we'll need as well. So we need to type in, let me get a clear screen here, sudo apt install mosquito clients. And of course we need to hit yes because it needs a few extra libraries. And once it installs that, then we'll be all ready to interact with the MQTT server. But I'm going to do a couple more installations just so we can have everything set up before we start um, running any programs. Okay, so we have the client, um, the client programs, we have the server. And I mentioned earlier we we're going to use Python, so let's install the libraries we need for Python. Now this one, we're using a a command called pip, which is a Python package manager to install the Python libraries for MQTT. Now there's several libraries available for Python, and we're going to use the particular one that I'm just used to. Um, there's others, and you know, after studying it, you may have a preference for one or the other. But I'm using the ones that are called Paho MQTT libraries. For, it's part of the Eclipse project, the IoT project. So let's install that now. We have to type in sudo pip install paho mqtt. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's just what I see it as. So we have to wait for a minute. You know, sometimes it takes a minute for these things because the Raspberry Pi is not super fast as a desktop computer. But it does a good job, especially the Raspberry Pi 3. If you're using a zero, it may take you a little bit longer. Okay, so we have the Python libraries. Now we're going to switch to actually a graphical user interface um, to install a couple of other things. I mentioned the SenseHat and the SenseHat emulator. So let's install the SenseHat emulator now. Click on your menu up here, the Raspberry Pi menu. Go down to Preferences, and then Recommended Software. Clicking on that. And it has to think for a minute to find all of its packages. Update all of its applications, and there we are. So we're going to install two things on here. One is under Programming. And we click on Programming and scroll down here. And what we want is the SenseHat emulator. Okay, so that's going to look, give us an interface that looks just like the SenseHat, and we'll be able to play around with that. So we want to install that. I'm not going to hit OK yet because I want one more thing. 
click on games and I want Minecraft. I'll show you in a minute what we're going to use Minecraft for, but it's a pretty neat test and it involves MQTT. So once we have those two selected, just hit OK. And it's going to take a minute to download and install those packages. That's all you really have to do. Once we do that, I'm going to do one more installation. Um, I need to install the examples that I'm going to run. I set up a Git repository, which is an online code repository for open source software mostly. And I'm going to um, show you how to download all the examples that we're going to run. So you'll be able to just download them. You won't have to type them in or recreate them. Okay, so let's see here. That's finished. So now we're done. So now let's install the Git repository. So just type in the following. Let me clear the line again to make it easier to see. And type in git clone https oops, github.com allen c98, that's my github account, mqtt examples dot git. Okay, let's type that in. And it, it already did it, so there they are. Um, we can cd into mqtt examples, cd into this 001 intro. And if you notice here that sometimes I type these things pretty fast, one trick I really like to use on this command shell in Linux is if you type something, um, you can hit tab and it'll complete a file name that it finds. So for example, if I say cd 001, and hit tab, it knows that that's the file there. It's convenient if you don't want to have to type a lot. So these are all the scripts that we're going to play around with. Some shell scripts and mostly Python. So let's first um, just make sure our MQTT server, the Mosquito server, is up and running. First of all, we need another window here. So let's bring up another window. new window and as you can see it's in the right directory that's one we need and we're just going to try out those first client programs we installed this is something i gave a demo of with my last video so we're going to see how it works so we need to type in mosquito sub give it a topic test temperature so now we're subscribed to the the temperature topic on the local uh, Mosquito or MQTT server. On my last video, I gave some examples of using this program where I actually gave the host name because we were actually talking to the server on another machine on my little NanoPi. If, you, if you're running on the same machine like this Raspberry Pi that your server's running on, you don't have to use that host option because it just defaults to local host. So that's convenient when you're just working on one machine. Okay, so we're subscribing to this test temperature. So let's also subs let's also publish something to that and see if it works. And if we get the data on where we're subscribing, we know that the server is working correctly. So we want to type in mosquito pub and use the same topic, test temperature. But we also need to give it a message to send the payload. So we have to say dash M and then give it some data. And you can see the data shows up there when I send it. So let's try it again just to make sure. And it really doesn't matter what data you're sending. I mean, you could say, you know, hello world if you want to, because MQTT really doesn't care what data you're sending on the topic. That's really up to you. Okay, so we know it works. So let's control C out of that. I'm going to show you a couple of the graphic clients on the other computers, like for example on Windows 10 and on Android, and show you how they can interact with the MQTT server that's running on the Pi. So let's switch to the Windows one first. I'm going to bring up this program called MQTT Box. And you can see here, I actually have two connections to MQTT servers 
on this MQTT box. I have one for my old NanoPi that I did on the last video, but I also have a new connection for the MQTT server that's running on the Raspberry Pi. If you recall my network diagram, my Raspberry Pi is at this address. So let's switch back to it and we're connected so we can click and I already have some um, a subscription and a publish window set up here. You know, I can get rid of these and add another publisher or subscriber if I want to. But these are all preloaded with my test slash temperature topic. I have a payload, let's say, on their 90. I'm going to send. And then here, I'm subscribing to test slash temperature. So let's subscribe. And let's hit publish over here. Yep, there it is. So it actually went, if you look here, went from the PC, this MQTT box program in Windows 10, across over to the Raspberry Pi, um, and then the MQTT server, Mosquito, took the data and routed it back over to my PC where the program um, got the subscribe data. So I can just hit publish and you can see that it keeps showing up. Um, Okay, so now let's switch to Android, where I'll show you a, an MQTT client program that's running on Android. I have here run um, Android for x86, which is for PC, running on the VMware player, so I don't have to kind of switch the camera to my phone or something. Okay, and we're going to look at this thing called MQTT Dash, which will enable us to connect to the MQTT server and display some data. So I already have my server connection set up for the Raspberry, and you can see it's already monitoring temperature. Let's see if we can take a look at this um, subscription here. So yeah, you can fill out all the details. You can say it goes from 0 to 100. You can set the color and all that good stuff. But let's just um, leave it alone, and then let's try publishing something on the Raspberry Pi and see if we can change it. All right, so let's switch back to the Pi. And we have that over here. So let's see where we can see them both. And let's do a pub of temperature. Um, instead of sending hello world, that might confuse this thing. I'm going to send um, 55. Oh, and there it is. You can see that it changed to 55. And if you even look on our Windows 10 client, you can see that it got it as well because it's still subscribing. So that's a nice thing. You know, you publish it to the server and then everybody who's subscribing gets it. Even if we were um, subscribing on here as well. You know, we could subscribe here again. And then let's publish it again. Um, say 56. So you can see the um, Linux or the Raspberry Pi client got it. Over here, we got it. You can see 56 here. And finally, on Android, you can see it. And so it's pretty cool. You can just publish the data, don't care where it's going, and anybody that's subscribing, any client that's available to reach it on the network can get the data. So it's really useful. And of course, you know, we didn't have to write a line of code for Windows or Android. Okay, we're going to get back to Android in a minute, but let me move on to the next part of the tutorial, which is I'm going to show you how to use Python with MQTT. Okay, so we have a bunch of scripts here still. Um, let's run the first one called Python sub 1. And what that does, it uses these MQTT libraries, the Paho libraries. Let's take a look at this first. Clear cat python sub 1 dot pi. And you can take a look at what it does. So, you know, for a Python program, it has to import the libraries that it uses. So this one's using the Paho MQTT client. We have to define a message callback. We're not doing much with the data right now. We're just saying, hey, we got a message. We have to say what broker we're going to talk to. In this case, we're using the same address of the Raspberry Pi. We could always also use something called the local host address here as well. And we have to give our client a client name, which can be any name as long as you don't duplicate it. 
And we have to do things like attach the message, that, um, the message callback we're going to use, which is this up here. Um, and then we connect to the client. And then, of course, we call this loop start. The loop allows the, the Python um, MQTT client to just sit there and wait for subscriptions to come in. And then after this loop is started in the background, we also need to subscribe to some data, to a topic. We could subscribe to more than one topic if we wanted to. So in this case, we're just using our old test temperature. And then the main program just kind of sleeps here. doesn't really do much. So let's run it. So we need to subscribe, which is this program. So we're going to type in Python, Python sub one. And it's running and subscribed and waiting. So here we also have, let's take a look at Python pub one which is our corresponding pub program. And you can see this is a lot simpler. Again, import the MQTT library, connect to the correct broker, give it a client address. And then it just has one line here, publish this data to this topic. So let's run it and see what happens. Python, Python pub one. And of course we got it. So. Um, another interesting thing is over here, we got it too. And I don't think I'm still running that on Android, but if I was still running the Android client, it would get it as well. So very useful stuff. So just to show you a little more complicated Python example, I'm going to run this program called Python pub sub. Oops, I should have typed in Python first. Python pub sub one. So what that's doing is it's showing you that you can actually do, um, you can publish data and subscribe to data at the same time. So we're actually subscribing to look for temperature data. Like if I do this pub one again, it got the temperature data. But meanwhile, while this thing is waiting in its loop, it's also publishing data to another, um, to another topic, a topic called counter. So let's open up a new window and we'll take a look at that. So let's see, we'll run Python, Python sub two, and that's actually subscribing to the counter that this is publishing. So what we have here is we have this guy, which is running, um, publishing the counter and incrementing the counter every second but it's also subscribing to temperature data. And whenever I publish some temperature data, it'll get it. So you can see that um, with Python, you can get a little more um, sophisticated with your programs and you can have multiple publishers and subscribers going on at the same time. All right, so that, and all this code is available on my GitHub repository for you to look at. You know, this is all based on examples that I've looked at and slightly modified. Okay, so let's try something now. Now that we're going to get into the world of sensors, we want to look at the um, sense hat emulator. So I'm going to need to make a little bit more room here. And I'm going to bring up the sense hat emulator. Okay, we go under, hit our Raspberry Pi menu, hit programming, and run the sense hat emulator. And this, this is a graphical program that's pretty cool. So you can see it looks like the little sense hat here, and you can adjust what it thinks, the temperature, pressure, humidity. You know, it has a little joystick here, so you can actually provide joystick inputs. Okay, so we've got this sense hat running, and now we're going to start to show how we can communicate with it. So the first program I'm going to run is just a simple one that'll just read the temperature. Um, so let's run Python. Sense hat read temp. And you can see that it's reading the temperature, but not only is it reading the temperature, but when it reads the temperature, it actually programs the LED matrix to represent whether it's hot or cold. So let's see, like if I move it way down to close to zero, zero degrees Celsius, it's mostly blue. 
So, and we, we crank it up to be really hot, 72 degrees Celsius, it's all red. So that's kind of um, an example of how you can actually program the Sensat. And the, the programs that we're using, the Python programs to talk to the Sensat can actually talk to the real Sensat as well by just changing one line in the program. You're basically saying, I want to talk to the Sensat or the Sensat emulator. Really simple to use. So now that we know how to read data, from the sense hat, let's actually do something with it. So we're going to run this program called sense hat publish temp. So let's see here. What, what it's going to do is once a second, it's going to read the temperature data from the sense hat, from the emulator, of course, and then publish it onto MQTT, onto our, our usual um, test slash temperature topic. So let's run that. Python. Sense hat publish temp. Okay, so now this guy is sitting there. It should be just publishing its temp, but how do we know we're getting it? Well, let's see. Um, what can we use to figure that out? The temperature is up to, let's put it down to 28, 28 and a half degrees. Let's go back over to our Windows client here. Yep, here it is. It's getting regular readings of 28.5 degrees. So, you know, our Windows client's still happy, still getting the data it's subscribing to. And we can go over here too and see it as well. We can um, type in Python, Python sub one, because I know that's going to subscribe to the temperature. And we can see it change. So let's put this here and we can see how when we change the temperature, we're going to get the latest data from the SenseHat emulator. So all of a sudden, you know, we have some internet connection or network connection to the SenseHat just using MQTT and not a bunch of custom code. So that's really where it starts to become an advantage of using a, a standard like MQTT. Okay, let's quit this and I have one more program to show you. So I'm going to quit the SenseHat emulator. Okay, we quit that, and now we're going to run one more demo, and this is a demo that we're actually going to, this is what we need Minecraft for. So let me move this down. I need a little more room because Minecraft takes a little bit more screen real estate here. Okay, so let's run Minecraft. So hit the Raspberry Pi button, go to games. We have Minecraft Pi. All right, so what we need to do is, um, well, we can start a game. Let's create a new world. We don't really have anything yet. And it'll build the terrain. And you'll see in a minute, it'll be kind of in this, in the Minecraft world here. All right, there's our Minecraft world. We can look around, we can move. Let's see, all right, we can chop if we want to. Use it to the usual Minecraft digging. Okay, so now let me escape out of this for just a minute because I need to go back over here and set up some programs. One of the cool things about um, Minecraft for the Raspberry Pi is it actually has a Python programming interface. So you can actually um, talk to the game and do things in the game just using a Python script. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a Python script, which I have in my examples, and it's called Minecraft Pub Position. So that means it's going to use the Python interface and it's going to read the position of the character in Minecraft and publish it to three different MQTT topics. Therefore, the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So let's run that now. So we run pub position, and you can see that it has, it's reading the X, Y, and Z coordinates of where the character is. And you can also see this message that showed up here hello Minecraft MQTT here, because that's a message I sent in the Python script. So let's move around and see if this changes. Um, go back to the game. 
and we can start trying to climb. I can't really reach this keyboard too well, but here we go. And you can see the you can see the Z axis over here is actually um, going up. So we're going up higher as we climb. And we can change over here and see if X and Y change as well. So we've got this data in Python, but let's try getting this data to MQTT. So we're actually publishing it to MQTT now, but let's take a look at subscribing to it. So Python Minecraft sub position. And you can see it's actually reading the position data over MQTT now. So let's go back and move around a little bit more. Back to game. And you can see that the MQTT data that we're receiving from the broker is actually changing. So it's pretty cool. I mean, it's not real world sensor data, but you know, there's a lot of things you can do. One of the things I, would, I was thinking about doing was trying to make an MQTT interface to something like Kerbal Space Program. I thought that'd be pretty cool. All right, so let me show you one more little trick here. I'm going to go back to Android and let's go back to our good old Android program. I'm going to run this different MQTT program where I'm actually keeping track of the X, Y, and Z coordinates on Minecraft. So here we go. Let's see if we are connected. Yep, we're connected to the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, I have these things set up in this Android um, mobile program for Minecraft X, Y, and Z. So I'm also subscribing to those. So let's see, can I actually move this around okay, so you can see them both at the same time? Let's see. All right, well, we have our Android over here showing X, Y, and Z. And we're going over back to our Minecraft Pi edition here. And as we move around, you can see the Z positions changing. Let's spin around a little bit and start going downhill. And you can see all these changes. So essentially, we've connected Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi to an app on my Android phone, or the emulator for the Android phone. And I, I didn't even write a line of Android code, not that I would know how to anyway. Um, so anyway, that's all I have for now. Um, I hope that gave you a little bit of better of an idea of what you can do with MQTT. There's a lot of information out there, um, a lot of neat home automation stuff, but I'm trying to just kind of start with the very basics and build up a little bit. In the next video, it might take a couple of videos, I'm going to try to put together a real-world application using a Raspberry Pi and some sensors so I can monitor something in my house. And I'm going to use MQTT to see if I can monitor the data coming from the Pi and the sensors. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you in the next video.